Hello students, today I am going to take up chapter 1, The Lost Child from your textbook Moments. It is written by a very famous Indian writer, Mulk Raj Anand. Let me give you a brief introduction about the writer. He was an Indian writer who wrote many famous English stories, novels and Indo-Anglian fiction. His stories always reflected the lives of poor people in traditional Indian society. And some famous books written by Mulkraj Anand are Untouchable, Kuli, Two Leaves and a Bud. Let's begin the story now. The Lost Child. The whole story revolves around a little boy who goes to a fair with his parents and he gets lost there. I am going to explain this chapter in three parts. Part 1. Child goes to a spring fair with his parents. Now let's begin part 1. It was the festival of spring. From the wintry shades of narrow lanes and alleys emerged a gaily clad humanity. Some walked, some rode on horses, others sat, being carried in bamboo and bullock carts. One little boy ran between his father's legs, brimming over with life and laughter. Scene 1 starts wherein it is shown that it is a festival of spring, it is a bright spring day and there is a fair going on for which people are coming from the narrow lanes and streets. Alleys means streets and gaily means cheerfully, means they are so cheerful and excited to go to a fair. Some are walking, some are riding the horses and some are sitting in the bullock carts. Among them there is a little boy who is so excited and brimming means overflowing, means he is overjoyed, he is full of excitement and he is so happy to go to a fair with his parents. So we can say that everyone in and around the village is travelling to partake of the delights of the fair. Partake means to attend in any event for enjoyment. And this young boy is skipping and running happily alongside his parents. There are many other people who are also travelling to a fair along with them. The boy's excitement grows as he sees all the people around them. He is fascinated by the shops, rides and many more things. And when he finds a toy shop, he gets so excited that he proclaims that he wants a toy, just like any other child of his age. This is quite natural for any child. This is the natural urge of children when they get attracted to any particular thing, they demand for it. But his father looks at him unpleasantly or harshly. Now to divert the child's attention, his mother draws his attention towards a mustard field so that he may not ask for the toys. There is a vast golden mustard field. The boy's attention is diverted because of its golden yellow color which fascinates that little boy. The field is filled with butterflies and the boy gets fascinated to see the beautiful and colorful butterflies. There is a group of dragonflies with purple wings and as the butterflies and dragonflies fly close to him, he tries to catch some of them but they elude him. Elude means uh, avoid or they escape from him. They feel tired and take shelter under a tree. Suddenly a shower of freshly bloomed flowers fall upon the child and he holds out his hand forgetting his parents and runs to catch the petals. Now he hears the cooing sound of dove. The boy looks around in wonder taking in all the sight and sound of nature. That means the child goes crazy in that excitement and beauty of nature. Now the boy and his parents are again set on their path to the fair. They are moving back to the fair. Now as they come near to the place of fair, the child gets overwhelmed with the view because there are so many shops and he is happy but confused. Because it is entirely a different and new word for that boy. The boy stops in front of a sweet shop. Because 
he is tempted by the delightful display of sweets there is a line mentioned an architecture of many colored sweets that means uh, you must have seen at sweet shops the shopkeepers usually display different varieties of sweets in the form of a in the form of designs different designs the boy slowly murmurs i want that burfi he wants to have burfi but he knows that his request would not fetch his parents attention so he moves on without asking for any sweet as they walk on he is attracted by the beautiful garlands of gulmohar in the next shop gulmohar is a kind of flower he again very hesitantly murmurs i want that garland but he knows that his parents will surely refuse him so without waiting for their reply he moves on now brightly colored balloons on a pole greet him next he stops and gazes at the bright beautiful balloons floating in the air balloons of different colors like green purple and all the silken colors attract this little boy but again he knows the reply of his parents that they would say you are too old to play with such toys and then he walks on next he finds a snake charmer playing his flute and his snake coils itself in a basket and he raises its head slowly the child wants to hear the music but he knows his parents will forbid him forbid means will not allow him finally he reaches the giant wheel and his eyes shine at the giant wheel keeping on turning with its brightly colored lights and people laughing and shouting now he cannot contain himself he slowly says i want to go on the roundabout and as soon as he turns around to look at his parents for the permission he finds that they are not with him any longer this is the end of part 1 let's move on to part 2 part 2 deals with the child gets lost in the fair now the child gets frightened and he starts screaming and howling he runs here and there in search of his parents the child realizes that he is lost he is separated from his parents and then he starts crying in fear he becomes so panic stricken that he keeps on sobbing and he keeps searching for his parents he is running here and there searching for his parents in such a huge crowd where men and women are talking and laughing and there are tears in his eyes and his clothes have also become dirty now now he runs quickly to a shrine shrine means a holy place he finds a temple but that is very congested with people he hopes to find his parents there but he cannot see them he has to struggle a lot this poor little boy has to struggle to make his way between the feet of the people but every time he is knocked to and fro by the movement of the people he keeps screaming father mother but in such a huge crowd it was really not possible for a little boy to find his parents this is the end of part 2 let's move on to part 3 last part deals with when a man meets this child a stranger meets this child in the fair now a kind hearted man rescues this poor little boy from the stampede of people and lifts him up in his arms the stranger asks the boy about his parents but the boy cannot tell him anything about his parents he only repeats i want my father i want my mother now in order to make the little child feel relaxed this stranger this kind hearted man takes him to the roundabout and asks whether he wants a ride but the child does not want any ride now he keeps sobbing and saying i want my father i want my mother now the man takes him to the snake charmer asking him if he wants to hear the music but now the child doesn't want to hear the music 
he closes his ears crying for his parents now just to quieten the child and distract his attention the man takes him near the balloons but the child shakes his head at the pretty balloons because he doesn't want any balloon now he keeps saying the same thing i want my father i want my mother children look at the change in the behavior of this child he doesn't want anything now he doesn't want to go for a ride he doesn't want to have balloons he doesn't want to enjoy the music of the snake charmer why because he was lost he was separated from his parents and now he doesn't like anything that means the child wants his parents only to make the child happy now the man takes him to the flower shop and asks if he wants to put a garland around his neck but the child refuses he doesn't want anything now finally the man takes the child to the counter of a sweet shop with the hope that he would wish to have sweets but again the child continues to cry for his parents and keeps saying i want my father i want my mother here the story ends with a doubt in the mind of the readers that whether this lost child found his parents or not but we can assume that this kind man or the stranger must have tried to locate his parents and this child must have found his parents finally